What is up guys, Suicidal Spade here, and today is Horror Tuesday, the first Horror Tuesday. And I am going to be reacting to this video that I found. It is uh, Four Short True Scary Stories by Mr. Nightmare. He's probably one of the best in like scary stories and stuff, so I'm going to listen to this, react to it, and you'll see how it goes. So let's go. It was a Friday or a Saturday night. I was pre-gaming with some friends at my apartment before going out to a bar in town. One of my friends called the Uber, and we were all pretty drunk, laughing and being loud with typical drunken banter. We got to the bar, and no line that night, surprisingly. At some point in the night, I asked for a girl's number who I'd been talking to. When I went into my pocket to get my phone, I realized I didn't have it on me. Okay, so uh, by what I've heard so far, I'm kind of curious if he actually didn't have it on him, or if it was like some sort of fucking pickpocket thing. Uh, I don't know. Let's keep going. Checked all my pockets and confirmed this. I tried retracing my steps in the bar and asked each bartender if someone turned in a phone. I didn't remember even using my phone the whole time I'd been out, though. I stepped outside the bar with one of my friends to use his phone to call mine. Someone picked up on the other end. I heard the fiddling of the phone, but they didn't say anything. I said, hi, where'd you find this phone? Just breathing on the other end. I asked them if they were at the bar, but they hung up on me. I looked at my friend and tried calling again. Went straight to voicemail, though. I tried using Find My iPhone, but apparently I had that feature switched off for some reason. This was a pretty sobering... Okay, whoever the fuck found his phone switched it off. That's all I'm gonna say. Let's go. Experience. There was no way I could have fun knowing my phone was stolen. My friends told me just worry about it tomorrow. Go to the police station and get their help in tracking it. I went home early that night. I put a couple slices of bread in the toaster before bed and found my phone on the kitchen counter. What the fuck? Okay, someone was in his house. That's kind of creepy. It didn't make sense. I signed into it and checked my recent calls. And indeed, someone accepted the call and it lasted for 25 seconds. Someone had been in my apartment to accept the call. That much was clear. I flipped the place upside down looking, screaming for whoever it was to come out from where they were hiding. Of course, this had a lot to do with the liquid confidence from drinking so much that night. I finally called the cops, but considering there was no real- You said it wrong. It's liquid encouragement, not liquid confidence. Proof of any forced entry, and places to hide are basically non-existent in this apartment. They couldn't do anything besides a police report. Nothing seemed to be missing from my apartment, but going to sleep that night, knowing someone had been in my apartment, or even worse, might possibly have still been in there with me. It's probably the most uncomfortable night of my life. I bet. Story one, uh, it's more like a true thing that could happen. Then again, these are short true stories. That was kind of fucked up and kind of creepy. And I wouldn't know what to think of that happened to me. Let's get on to story two. <laughs> I was 17 years old, and this happened on a late summer night. My dad and little brother had gone to a Boy Scout camp out. My dad was one of the Scout Masters. I was home alone with my mom for the weekend. She was already in bed at this point. It was about 2 in the morning, and I was just finishing up my late night gaming. I had to go to the bathroom one more time before going to sleep, though. While sitting on the... First of all, bathrooms are probably the scariest part of the house. Except... For the kitchen, because there's knives in the kitchen. Toilet playing games on my phone. I heard the faintest little tap on the bathroom door. Mom, was that you? Mom, I yelled. It wasn't windy or anything. There didn't seem to be any logical way to dismiss it. I slowly and nervously opened the door, but there was nobody there. However, my bedroom door was now shut. I was certain I hadn't shut it. I went over to my mom's room and told her that I thought somebody was in my room. 
She didn't take me seriously and told me that she didn't know what to tell me. I tried to convince myself that maybe I did shut my door. I opened my door feeling extremely freaked out, and when I snuck a peek into the room, I felt like my heart exploded inside of my chest. I could see a hand sticking out from behind the dresser in the corner of my room. Somebody was hiding there. I ran to my mom's room and locked the door behind me. After quietly freaking out, telling her there's a man in the house, she finally believed me and went straight to my phone to call the cops. I put my ear up against the door to try and hear anything going on outside. I eventually heard the man's footsteps come out from my room and slowly come closer to my mom's room until making it right outside the door, then stopping. I could see the outlines of his shoes through the bottom crack of the door. He tried the doorknob, but thankfully it had a lock. It seemed the lock was enough to persuade him to give up, because I heard him stomp down the stairs and out the front door. I hurried to the window to see which way the man was heading, but he was already gone. Yo. I'm home alone right now? That was fucking weird. Alright. Story 3. Let's see. <clears throat> fucking ads. When I was younger, 10 years old at the time, my mom had just started letting me stay home alone. We had been watching my mom's friend's dog while they were on vacation. My mom worked weeknights, so she told me that they would come around back since the dog's cage was right next to the back door, and that I would have to let them in. I sat in the den by the back door, with the dog by my side while I watched TV. He then started to growl and bark, while looking out the window to the dark. See, that's scary to me, because I actually believe in spirits and stuff, and dogs can see that shit. I tried to see what he was barking at, but it was too dark. Of course, I assumed it was my mom's friend coming to pick up the dog. I went over to the door with the dog following me and turned on the patio light. I couldn't see anyone out there at first, but the dog was still barking. I made sure to peek at every corner of the yard, but then I saw someone at the garden by our shed. It looked like my mom's friend. They seemed to be bending over, picking something up. I assumed she was admiring my mom's garden or something logical. I then received a disturbing phone call. I prioritized answering the phone, as my mom was strict about me always answering the phone when I was home alone. I left the dog to continue barking by the door as I picked up the phone, hoping it was my mom. And it was. She told me that her friend wasn't going to pick up the dog that night, as they wouldn't be getting home until past midnight. I began to stutter as the pure horror. Yo. I'm just going to go ahead and tell y'all, I'm, I'm recording this for Tuesday, but it is the middle of the day, 3.08 p.m. on a Monday. Fucking, and I'm still, like, what the hell? Oh, shit. Or prohibited me from speaking coherently. I managed to finally blurt out that someone was in our yard, and my mom started screaming like a lunatic. She told me to get up to my room, lock the door, and hide under the bed while my mom called the cops. I obeyed and laid there in silence for a good ten minutes, until I got a knock at the door. I sprang up and out of the room, making it halfway down the stairs. I saw a face looking in through the window of our front door. This face, a guy, staring right at me. A face so unsettling that it disturbs me thinking of it today. I screamed at the guy that the police were on their way, but he didn't move. He insisted on just staring at me like a statue. I ran all the way back upstairs, tripping twice, and back to my room. I waited another few minutes before another knock came at the door, followed by a muffled shouting noise. It was the police this time. They scanned the whole premises, but the guy was gone. They took me into custody until my mom arrived at the station. After that incident, she started having a babysitter watch me again, all the way until I was 12. Huh, I would want a fucking babysitter after that shit. Ooh, what the fuck? 
The thing is, this is all shit that can happen. What? All right, last story. <clears throat> Let's go. A long time ago, my girlfriend and I were looking for a private place to be alone together since our parents were always home. There was a vacant house on the corner of our block that hadn't been owned for years. It's an abandoned fucking house and you want to go there? My god, people are stupid. That was on you, buddy. The back door was always left unlocked. I would know because my friends and I had been in there before. We went in through the back. But before we could even get upstairs, there was a knock at the front door. We looked at each other with worry. What if someone had caught us sneaking in? She peeked out the window, but there was no one on the stoop. She made sure that the door was locked before turning back to me. I assured her it was just some kids playing Ding Dong Ditch. We made it only halfway up the stairs before the frantic knocking on the door came back. She checked the window again. The porch was still empty. She opened the door this time and still couldn't see anyone. I wanted to look tough to impress her, so I stepped outside and yelled at the pranksters to try it again. I shut the door and waited behind it, hands on the doorknob, ready to throw the door open. I just waited there for at least a minute, and I was about to just forget about it when I heard the blood-curdling scream of my girlfriend. <laughs> turned to see what she was screaming at, and I screamed as well. Just barely in the dark, we could see the silhouette of a huge humanoid figure very slowly making its way down the stairs. It was moving in a hovering-like motion. We ran past it just in arm's reach and left the house the way we came. We ran all the way back to my house, both of us out of breath. We know it couldn't have been an old person. They had to be at least seven feet tall. Nobody was supposed to be living in that house, though. I even asked a friend living across the street from the house, and he said it had been vacant for years. The ghostly way the figure moved made it all the more disturbing. We both agreed to keep quiet about this story, but I still occasionally have a nightmare or bad thoughts about that night. Yo. That kind of reminds me, like, the knocking part just kind of reminds me of something, but I'm not going to get into it. Um, that was fucking weird, too. Like, what was it? It's like they got attacked by fucking Slenderman or something? I don't know. Um, Alright, guys, so make sure you tune in tomorrow for Music Wednesday. We'll, react, we'll be reacting to more of uh, Music to be Murdered by. I think... Uh, I'm trying to think... I don't know what the song is next. I'm about to do some research. But, uh... I'm just gonna say that... that Those stories were actually pretty fucking freaky. But I think the next one's gonna be more fictional. I like the true stories every now and then. But I also like the fictional stuff. Uh, yeah. So, we'll see you guys in the next video. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.